All right, hello and welcome everybody. So today uh, I'm gonna do kind of a little palate cleanser per se, uh, just for myself. Um, I have a huge collection of Dungeons and Dragons miniatures and I think um, it would help bring a little bit of a different audience to the channel as well. But um, I figured I'd start doing these, you know, just one once every couple of weeks, once a month, something like that. Uh, but just do something simple, you know, keep it, you know, easy. And um, that way also it'll allow me to get into the Monster's Manual and read up on some of these guys and kind of what they look like and things like that. Uh, so today I'm just going to do the basic Skeleton Warrior because I figured it'd be an easy start in. I already know what they look like, uh, the colors I'm probably going to want and going to want to use. And um, yeah, so I'm really pretty excited for this so um i guess i'll start with just this is a skeleton warrior he's got a sword and shield as you can tell that's about it there's nothing really to his base uh these plastics um i don't know what type of plastic it is but it's not the same type uh as gw it's not porous by any means it's not it doesn't take paint very well I, uh, I had to definitely put down a primer on it like a GW model you can take it and start putting paint on it right away and it'll almost just about pretty much stick these guys not so much I had to uh, spray paint this guy and get a, a layer over him sorry mosquito so for the bone we're going to use Rathgar flesh this is my favorite color for bone because it comes out like a grayish white color uh, kind of like the bone is aged and it's not um, healthy maybe um, Hagrid sure straight for pretty much the shade for the whole model type is corrosion I'm going to use this on this in combination with rise of rust on the uh, sword to give it a rusty um, beat up feel uh, lead belcher obviously for the sword and metals um, I'm gonna probably play with the bronze just to mix it up a little bit on the shield to keep it interesting and uh, I'll use nihil oxide on there to give it an aged look um, sterling battermeyer it's a texture paint for the base that I'm probably gonna do uh, just to give it make it a little bit more interesting uh, the rock that's on the base I'll use these two um, Skaven Blight Dinge and Dawnstone and then the leather straps on a shield I'll use Dryad Bark. Uh, these are all Citadel paints from Games Workshop. Um, they are meant for painting miniatures. They have a higher, a higher pigment concentration uh, so they're, you can put less on and still get the same effect. So I guess we'll just get started. All right, first we're gonna go ahead and start with the bone. So we're just gonna do a one-to-one -one, um, with the Rathgar flesh. Then we'll uh, go ahead and start in with the lead belcher for the metal parts.
Next, I'm going to go ahead and do Balthasar Gold uh, for the bronze. At the start of the bronze, this is the base color, and then I'll go ahead and follow up later uh, with a dry brush of uh, Scorax Bronze to brighten it up a little bit. Now this is a technical called uh, Typhus Corrosion and it's basically a liquid paint with a almost like sand type texture in it and it makes things bumpy. Uh, so basically you do this, it darkens up the metal, it makes it look corroded and stuff and then you go back over it with Rise of Rust which is an orange color uh, that gives it a rust brown tone. Uh, so at the end of the day you have this nasty rusty old beaten up looking sword. Next, I just did the stone. Uh, I just did a dark gray followed by a light gray. Uh, it's the Skaven Blade followed by the Dawnstone, uh, just to give the base a little bit of difference other than the brown that I'm going to put on there. oxide on the bronze which gives it an oxidized look uh, but I went ahead and stopped myself because I forgot to dry brush the uh, Scorax bronze on and all I'm dry brushing is for those of you who are new is you take a lighter color paint than the original dark paint and you brush it out kind of like I did there and then you really really lightly uh, dust it over the top of your original color and it'll brighten up just the edge pieces which makes it look highlighted. It's a very simple technique that a lot of people use on a, a very consistent basis. Once again we are uh, dry brushing the um, the dawn stone onto the rock on the bottom uh, to do the exact same effect that we just did on the shield. It's just a dry brush. It brings out those raised edges. Here's that Rise of Rust. Uh, after we did the Typhus, we come back over and do a very, very light dry brushing. Uh, Ryza is a technical paint. Uh, it's a dry paint, uh, so it already comes out very, very thick and globby. So you have to wipe a lot of it off your brush at first uh, so it doesn't go on too heavy. Uh, but you just barely dust it over the top of all the metals, uh, minus the bronze, and it gives it a kind of a rusty look when combined with that uh, Typhus.
putting a Nilux oxide like I'm about to do now, very thin down, gives a oxidized look to bronzes and golds. So that's what that is there. This is not a paint I included in the original list, I'm sorry. This is called Blood for the Blood God. It is a technical paint as well. Um, it is just a gloss red, uh, so whenever it dries, it dries real shiny. So I kind of to give that middle little piece like a ruby look or something, to, just to break it up a little bit. And finally, we're going to apply liquid talent, Agrax Earthshade. This is literally a liquid paint that you just spread all over the model. Um, and basically, it's going to fall into all the cracks and crevices and bring out those shadows and make the details really pop on the model. Um, yeah, that's it. You just slather it on, try and keep it cleaned up so it doesn't blob anywhere, and just let it pool into the crevices. And finally, the last piece of this project, it's a, a GW texture paint. It's literally just a stuff you scoop and plop onto the base, and once it dries, it looks like um, dried mud or earth. Uh, so, yeah, and then afterwards, you can dry brush it, but uh, I just went ahead and left mine bare uh, for now, just to kind of give it a muddy appearance. So, 